Two stars, A and B, are in circular orbits of radii RA and RB, respectively, about their common center of mass at point P, as shown. Each star has the same period of revolution, T. Determine expressions for the following three quantities in terms of RA, RB, T, and fundamental constants. We have four things to calculate today, so this could be a long one. The centripetal acceleration of star A, the mass MB of star A, the mass MA of star A, and the angular momentum of the system about the center in terms of everything else that we've already calculated. Let's work on problem one, one of the simpler ones, the centripetal acceleration of star A. Let's write down what we know about centripetal acceleration, AC by definition, will be v squared over r, where v is a uh, linear speed, talking about the uh, covering the whole circle and then dividing that by time, and r is the distance uh, of the body from the center of rotation. Now we already know this to be r a, it's told us right there. The v, of course, I'll remind you of a a uh, rotating body is going to be 2 pi r over t. And conveniently, you know, we already know this radius, okay, of rotation. And t, the period of rotation, is something that's been given to us. Again, a reminder, that's like the circumference of a circle divided by the time it takes to encircle uh, that path, okay? So it's really just distance over time we'll be making this substitution and then simplifying. We'll have 2 pi ra over capital T squared over ra. And that's going to simplify to, and I'm going to move this term that it turns into down into the bottom because we do that with fractions. 4 pi squared ra squared over t squared R A. Of course, one of those R A's on top will cancel with the one in the bottom. So pretty quickly, that wasn't so bad, we have 4 pi squared uh, R A over T is equal to the centripetal acceleration of star A. And I really don't think uh, star B would be much different. We'll see if we actually need that. Uh, if so, we're just going to replace R A with R B. We'll have the centripetal acceleration of star A, star B as well. All right, so that completes this one. Let's move on to the next part. Here in part two, we are asked for the mass M B of star B. I've gone ahead and written down the centripetal acceleration of star A from the previous part. And what I'm going to do is work from the perspective, gravitationally, of star A. If you choose to switch perspectives and work on star B instead, that's perfectly fine. But since this is what we have, let's go ahead and consider a free body diagram on star A. If I were to consider all the forces that are acting on star A, I would come up with only one. A force pulling me towards the center of orbit, and it would be the gravitational force. Now, all of these forces uh, the one force that I wrote down must come together to make the sum of all forces. The sum of all forces, therefore, is equal to the gravitational force. Now, the gravitational force has a definition. It's G, in this case, MA, MB, over R squared, where R is the distance between my two bodies that are gravitationally attracting one another. The net force, if you'll recall, by Newton's second law, is equal to ma. But here, we know the acceleration. The acceleration being the acceleration at the end of the day after you sum up all the forces. So of course, mac is equal to gmm over r squared. We're going to take this opportunity to get more specific. Of course, we know we have MA, I guess I should have said that over here, in case that wasn't obvious, MA, and instead of AC, we're going to use what we calculated, 4 pi squared RA over T squared. 
And that, let me just go ahead and, whoops, let me go ahead and line this up a little bit. And that's equal to G, MA, MB. And what can we say about the radius, the radius squared? Well, according to this picture, the distance between planet A and planet B is going to be that plus that, star A and star B rather. So RA plus RB. I think that would be the case no matter how this diagram was aligned because they told me that each star has the same period of revolution. For instance, when star B happens to wind up over here, star A will have moved the same distance. So conveniently, the distance between these two stars is always the same, and that's just something we can take advantage of here in our undergraduate or high school level physics course, thankfully. Now what remains is algebra, the whole purpose of this series. And I'm going to show you that we do in fact have enough information in this equation to solve for the desired variable mb, even though at the moment we don't actually know ma. Let me take a moment to distribute the ma into this expression. In case you can't see it already, we're going to wind up canceling those MAs, but I'll just write it down like so. Nice and slow, step by step. No pressure. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is divide by GMA, and at the same time, I'm going to multiply both sides by RA plus RB. And here's what the result of that is going to look like. We're going to have RA, RA plus RB squared, that is, I apologize, RA plus RB squared times MA 4 pi squared RA over the T squared that's already there, and don't forget, we're going to divide both sides by GMA, GMA, so GMA, and at that point, we have that equal to MB, all nice and isolated. We never needed to know mass A because that is canceling out. And I guess one of the ways I can write this with the uh, numbers coming first, that tends to be how it looks best. We have 4 pi squared RA, RA plus RB squared over T squared G is equal to MB, and we are done. So the question is, do you think the next part, where we find MA, is going to be that much dif different? Uh, we could take a shortcut, but this being an explainer video, I will not take the shortcut. Instead, I'll show you exactly how it's done. Okay, so now for a total inversion, they'll find the mass MA of star A working from star B's perspective. As I did before, let's consider all the forces acting on star B, and we find only one. Pulling us towards the center of rotation must be the gravitational force. Meaning that the sum of all forces there on star B must be equal to the gravitational force upon star B, and very similarly to last time, we have that uh, MB times its centripetal acceleration will be equal to G M A M B over R squared, the distance between the two bodies, but we'll recall that we figured out that that was R A plus R B. Now, okay, I know I said no shortcuts, but I think I am going to ask you to recall how I said that the centripetal acceleration of either star is going to be pretty similar to what I said here. I calculated it in part one for star A, where it turned out that we used RA, but guess what? We're just going to be using RB instead. So that part's almost exactly the same. I'll not do that over. So ACB is going to be 4 pi RB over T squared. And that's equal to G MA MB over RA plus RB squared. Okay, now 
We'll go a little bit faster this time, but we know that MB will once again cancel out, okay? You can do that in advance, noticing that the same term occurs, uh, you know, on the same part of the fraction on both sides of the equation, or you can wait until you divide. But just like last time, I'm going to be multiplying both sides by RA plus RB squared and dividing both sides by, well, G, now that NB is gone. And the result of that is going to be this. 4 pi RB, RA plus RB squared over G T squared is equal to MA. And as promised, that is exactly the same as the MB we counted before with one key difference. RA has been swapped out for RB. Armed with all the things that we have just figured out about this system, we are allowed to express the angular momentum of the system about the center of mass exclusively in terms of the masses, the radiuses, the period of rotation for both objects, and the fundamental constants. Now, angular momentum, by definition, for a particle, is a nice simple formula, m v r. Total angular momentum for a system is nothing but the sum of m v r's. Therefore, we just need to take m a, v a, r a, and add that to m b, v b, and r b. Of the things that we are told are allowable variables, Velocity is not among them, and that's why I wrote these down from all the way back in part one where we were thinking about centripetal acceleration. We're just going to make the appropriate substitution. So we have ma uh, 2 pi ra over t, another ra, and the same thing over here for star b. Now, from the looks of it, if we wanted to make this nice and tidy, we do have some like terms. Both of them include the 2 pi and the t. So I can factor that out as follows. 2 pi over t. Then a big old bracket or parentheses. And we're going to have ma uh, ra squared for multiplying those. And the same thing for star b. All right. And with that, we are finally done with this gravitational dynamics problem.